ever compare yourself to other women and feel like they have more to offer? Maybe you wish you had their personality or their abilities. I'm pretty sure my struggle with comparison started in middle school. I really didn't like who I was, but I wanted everyone else to like me. When I was in sixth grade, we moved from Louisiana to North Carolina. And during the first few weeks of school, I got teased so much for my freckles and my weird accent. Although I couldn't change how I looked or talked, I could change what I liked and how I acted. My strategy was simple. I compared myself to girls around me and I tried to figure out who was most popular so I could be like them. And it was exhausting. Unfortunately, comparison didn't go away after middle school. It followed me all the way into my grown up years. Honestly, it wasn't until I was in my early 30s that I realized I was stuck in a comparison trap again. I was trying to find my purpose, yet I was confused and frustrated because I didn't know who I was. And it's because I kept comparing myself to other women who were so gifted and seemed like they knew their calling. And I wondered why God had made me more like them. Honestly, I'm convinced comparison is a woman's worst enemy. Comparison hinders our relationship with God because it makes us discontent. And comparison also affects our relationship with other women because it makes us compete with each other. And yet God never intended for us to compete with each other. He wants us to complete one another, encouraging each other's strengths while discovering and embracing our own. In chapter 8, that's what I want to help you to do. The Apostle Paul explains why it's so important. In 1 Corinthians 12, 18 through 20, he says, But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If there were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The truth is, the only way that we're going to become the women that God wants us to be is if we break free from the comparison trap by embracing who we are in the body of Christ and how God created us instead of trying to be who we're not. So how do we get started? Well, first, you need to trust that God made you just who He wants you to be, and then be the best you. To get started, let's talk about the unique personality God gave you. Your personality is your natural way of doing things and relating to other people. You have strengths and what I call relational challenges. God intentionally wove both of these together when He was making you. In her book, Personality Plus, Florence Littower describes in depth the unique traits of four different personality types. This book really helped me discover and value the unique way that God made me. In chapter 8, you'll find a summary of the different personalities. See if you can identify which personality traits best describe you. First, there's the phlegmatic. If you are phlegmatic, you bring peace wherever you go, to your relationships, to your family. You are calm, witty, low-key, considerate, and reliable. And don't we all need someone like that? Or maybe you're melancholy. If you're melancholy, you bring order. You bring order to your home, to your workplace. You're a good planner. You're organized. You're accurate and intuitive. And you're empathetic. And who doesn't need someone like that in their life? Or maybe you're choleric. If you're choleric, you bring direction. You're a great problem solver and good organizer. You're also high energy and you excel in a crisis and you're more task oriented. We all need someone like that to keep our lives in order. And then there's the sanguine. If you're a sanguine, you bring fun. You're more people oriented. You're friendly, you're humorous, you're charming, you're a creative storyteller, and you thrive on activity. Now, when I read all of these traits for the first time, I felt like I had multiple personalities. But then I realized it's because I was still trying to be more than God created me to be. Over time, as I was honest about what came most natural for me, I discovered I'm a blend of two personality types, and that's how most of us truly are. As you read chapter 8 this week, I hope you'll take time to study the personality types and identify what strengths come most naturally to you and see the value in each of them so you can start being who God wants you to be. Isn't it great to realize the reason you do things the way you do is because it's all part of your God-given personality and purpose? The only way that you can break free from the comparison trap is to embrace who you are. Then, like the psalmist, you'll be able to say, in Psalm 139, 13 through 14, You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. 
Let's be women who no longer compare and compete, but celebrate and complete our relationships with the unique offering that we bring. You are going to love the purpose and the confidence that comes when you learn to like and even love the woman that God created you to be.